So ultimately, <laughs> assessment and proof of food intolerance is done through a, a process of elimination and rechallenge. Right? And if you read in the scientific literature of, of food intolerance, you'll find um, repeated again and again and again. The people say, well, we assessed the IgA antibodies of these children with chronic digestive complaints, and we came up with, uh, and we came up with this, and ultimately this was confirmed with elimination and rechallenge. And then they always put a little comment, and they say, the gold standard for diagnosis. Right? So you see that so often it's like a cliche. Elimination and rechallenge, the gold standard for diagnosis. This is in the literature of immunology. And so I like to say, why settle for the bronze or the silver? Go for the gold, right? So this is your skill set. Elimination and rechallenge is the skill set. This is how you find out ultimately whether that food is causing you suffering and illness and w exactly what it's causing and what will happen when you avoid it and what will happen when you take some back again. This is what I, I have described as an important life skill. I really believe families should be taught this. This should be taught in schools, right? The, uh, the goal of identifying for public health, for individual health, what foods may be compatible or incompatible with, uh, with uh, each individual. So uh, this is uh, the skill set. It's right here in the next half a dozen slides. Okay. Um, first of all, here we answer the question, why do withdrawals fail? So the first thing is you have to do an effective withdrawal. So if I show the stumbling blocks, it'll, uh, it'll describe how to do an effective withdrawal. The withdrawal was not complete due to poor instructions. I, I um, suggested that my patient cut out dairy, so they cut out milk, but they didn't cut out cheese. Right? Poor instructions. I should have instructed them the whole milieu of foods. Right? A withdrawal was not complete due to covert or hidden foods. We saw a number of cases of that, or several cases of that in our case studies. Um, uh, the withdrawal didn't last long enough. Um, I'll have a, a patient will come to me and I'll say, well, let's explore dairy allergy. And I'll say, oh, oh no, I tried eliminating that. It didn't do any good. And I say, well, how long was it? Well, I didn't have any for three days and nothing got better. Right? So um, it's very common that people think they've done an elimination when they just cut out part of the food. No attention to screening of foods or anything. Okay. The other, and I'm going to spend some more time on this, the withdrawal succeeded, but progress was not accurately assessed. In other words, the person got better, but they didn't think they got better. There's a second or third allergen involved. Uh, somebody may be intolerant of milk, and they may also be intolerant of wheat. If they cut out the milk, they will probably feel a lot better, but they won't feel as better as we hope they'll feel. Right? And so in some cases, it feels like the, the milk withdrawal failed because they didn't get all the way better. In some cases, there's a second allergen or a third allergen uh, involved. Um, if people have persistent intestinal dysbiosis, this is the patient who has had a long, long series of antibiotics. Um, I know in, in the United States, uh, <laughs> when I was a teenager, they used to give people a broad spectrum antibiotic every day for two years for acne, right? And this has just completely destroyed the balance in their, in their microbiome. So um, in uh, some cases, uh, we need to do rebuilding of many elements of the system before the, uh, the elimination and rechallenge will, will be completely effective. Um, there may also be persistent leaky gut syndrome from nutrient deficiencies or under eating. Uh, this is uh, if uh, uh, through under eating, through uh, an eating disorder, people lose part of their function of taste, right? And they lose uh, some of their digestive secretions and the dynamism of the gut lining when they're malnourished. So uh, in, if that is the root cause of what's going on with them, then the food elimination won't eliminate uh, everything. So sometimes you have to build up the whole system in order to have an effective um, elimination. Uh -huh.